Okay. And <coughs> we're still in module one, changing, um, interesting and changing world. But today we're going to work on chapter two, again, business ethics and social responsibility. Um, in this chapter, we will discuss and define um, ethics and social responsibility. Why are they important from a deep standing? Uh, we're going to detect some ethical issues that may arise in business. We're going to um, show how business can promote ethical behavior. Uh, we're going to explain the four dimensions of social responsibility, and we're going to also talk about social responsibility to employees, well, you know, stakeholders, um, owners, um, um, employees, consumers, the environment, and the community. I alluded to that um, in my first um, lecture on how important it is to provide a service or good to a company or an individual, but also it has to be done in a way that will be responsible, and we're always responsible for what we do and what we produce um, for other use. Business ethics is going to be standards that determine what's acceptable in business, acceptable conduct. Which, how do you act? What is not acceptable and what is? Um, it's going to be determined by the organization and the individual's personal pr principle, but it's also going to be um, determined by outside parties, including um, interest groups and consumers, competitors, and also regulators. But it's really trust. Um, your ethics is trust. Some people trust you to do what's right. People can trust you to do not only what's loyal, lawful and correct, but also what, what's right and um, trustworthy to others, third parties. So the trust is going to be the glue. It's going to be that thing that, con that connects you with your, um, your relationship with your consumers. It's very, very important. When you lose that, uh, really it's going to be the demise of your organization. So we cannot overemphasize the, uh, the nature of business ethic and how ethics and how important it is um, to a business. Um, the crisis um, that we've been going through in our own country um, as far as how products are produced um, outside of the U.S. and the type of workforce that is being used, um, their working conditions, their um, treatment. Um, it's, it's really, this goes so much beyond what's lawful and what's correct because clearly if you're doing business outside of the nation of, of the United States and they don't have laws that dictate um, environments and, and um, working hours and age, it still doesn't make it right. So ethics goes beyond what's right and legal, but it also also talks about how they treat people and the conditions in which they are exposed to and caring about their safety and producing a good or service that you will ultimately sell to a consumer. Social responsibility is going to be um, trying to figure out a way to uh, maximize um, positive impact and minimize uh, negative impact. Now, clearly things happen that, that no organization can anticipate, but how we respond to things uh, really makes a difference. And this is really your responsibility to know what's going to be the output or the re um, output of what you do and the products that you provide. So it's going to be individual or your work and your decisions. How do you make decisions? What kind of decisions are you going to make ethically? Um, are they the right decisions? Um, a lot of things is going to be guiding that um, decision, but really – um, your organization is going to have to set the tone. It's got to say what is what they consider to be ethics, and it's going to be framed within the context of the individuals and their own ethical um, orientation. Clearly, we have laws, um, and these are a couple of the laws that really affect businesses, and these are the laws um, based on the 10-year intervals and how they are uh, geared to create an environment in a workplace and a business environment that's transparent, that misconduct in a corporate level is dealt with, and on the, on the just relationship um, of how information is disseminated to third parties, that includes accounting and finance, and being honest and truthful about compensation. How do you uh, compensate your um, executive board? Now, having standards of ethical conduct is a very, very positive step, and I think it's important that an organization large enough to be very clear about what they expect from, from their employees and what they're going to expect from themselves and what they're going to how, how they're going to hold in the individuals responsible for their behavior. So, um, so business is really it's 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 actually pretty clear that ethical issues, um, are work hand in hand with uh, with laws and, and so forth. But it's also how we frame it our our the public. How are we going to make the public see us in the right way? Really depends on how our, our, how we administer our standards, how we stand behind what we do, and how we build the level of trust. And trust is something that is valuable. It really is. And uh, so we have to think about all those types of things. I mean, some things are legal and some things are not legal, but when you get beyond that, and that's what I would like to see in ethics. In the, in ethics. And so, for example, one of the things would be deceptive advertising. You want to make certain that you are honest. 
you want to give people what they what you believe they need but you don't want to have to force it down their throats you don't want to be misleading them to buy something that they don't need or creating a, a need that doesn't exist by telling them something that's not true um cyber crimes is, is a new issue we've never had it before this is a new problem that i don't think it's really gotten under control but quite frankly because cyber crimes has all evolved like a virus i mean there are so many iterations of of the crimes that can be perpetuated over the internet um and we are constantly trying to find ways to um control that but it's it's a it's a real issue now that we are using internet and using computers to communicate and conduct business accounting fraud has come into light a few years ago with um with uh, a couple organizations and a couple of cpa firms stealing money and hiding it um but the most important and the most recent is going to be the sub loans subprime loans and foreclosures we again we want to depend on organizations to be honest with us don't buy don't sell us something that you know we can't afford and don't withhold information that you believe um will be critical in the decision making process so we got to do things right i mean it's going to end up being very bad for everybody i think the most important thing is we want to get a sale we want to get the right sale so don't get a sale that's not going to be um a lawful one or an ethical one and we want to make sure that we want to keep our customers so ethical concerns are vital because not only you want to get the, the consumer to buy your product but you want them to continue to buy the product that you provide and you want them to tell others about your product and ethics is going to be a really a really guiding principle because of an organization is not ethical and people don't care about what the prices are for their product they're not going to buy it um they're um exploiting the workforce or they're using child labor or some issue that's very very uh, frowned upon in our own nation they're using it in another nation simply because it's legal that's important to individuals and we will determine i am not going to patronize an organization that does not care about people the workforce so we need to be very very um very very sure about our position and make it clear to the employees that we hire that we're not going to stand for these types of things um so ethical issues are um, are very important to note i would say sorry about that i would say that you need to make certain that you um really know what's going on and be honest with people one of the biggest issues and i don't know if any one of you are uh, involved in in some way with um professional football but one of the biggest issues with football was they're withholding information that would been that has been damaging physically to some of the football players and that is re- regarding head injuries. They we all know that um he- head injuries are a very serious concern with um with certain organized sports and and um football in particular and the equipment that they use quite frankly is designed to protect them to the extent that they can using obviously this is a very contact driven sport. However, that general knowledge is not enough because the types of injuries that most of those uh football players had incurred had so much more uh long-term effect which never was given to those of players we need to know that i mean if you know what the concerns are and you know what's going to happen when you do certain things and you're giving that information in a very transparent way you accept the risk or you don't accept the risk but the but when you withhold information that is very important to them and would alter their decision in some way you have a responsibility to inform them and one of the biggest problems with that was they were not informed and as a result many of those retired players are suffering brain issues and and all types of medical issues as a result of repeated head injuries in the form of concussions etc so what we want to do is make certain that we are dealing with people who are honest our organization that we are are employed by we want them to be honest with us we want us to we want to know what's going on so that we can make an informed decision and sometimes risk we can we will assume those risks but i think we should assume those risks with full knowledge um but this our worksheet here is just giving you some types of forms of misconduct that have recently been brought to the forefront um including use of misuse of company time lying and stealing but again we're talking about let's have an organization that um is clear on their expectations of employees and are very much going to take action when um at when individuals violate those actions so we are f- also want to deal with bullying bullying is not something that is happening in schools anymore it's happening over the internet it's happening in our communities it's happening on the job 
And we didn't know about those prices. We didn't know what it cost to keep a bullet. And these are the type of things that we have identified. I would assume that they are far more than that. But we want to make sure our behavior is right. We are uh, our leaders in our organizations. We want to make sure that the, the conduct that um, among our employees are consistent with our standards. And we want to make certain that people know that. So the most important thing is when you recognize an ethical issue and how to deal with it. And the most important thing when you're dealing with um, ethical issues is telling the employees, this is what we consider an ethical issue. It may very well be far beyond what the law say, which is great. It may very well be inconsistent with the law. It doesn't matter. They need to know what the laws are. They need to know what the ethical violations are and how to spot them and what to do. Um, fairness and honesty. That's the, going to be the bedrock. I think in many ways it's the foundation for every type of relationship you have. And it's particularly true in business. You've got to be honest. You've got to be fair to people. You've got to give them full disclosure of information. If it's going to be harmful to you, tell them what to do if when something happens and how to protect themselves. They need to know how to use a product so that they don't cause harm to themselves or others. They need to be very truthful in advertising. If you're an employee who has confidential, confidential information, you need to be, you need to keep your mouth shut. Um, you need to meet your obligations financially, and not only to your consumers, but also to the regulators and also to your vendors and, and suppliers. It's important. We don't want to put people or employees in a position to act unethically. Don't put any standards that would, would put them in a position where they have no choice but to do something wrong to, in order to keep their job. This is just not a position to put any employee in. Um, but also, but employees have a responsibility as well. They have to abide by the laws. They have to abide by the policies of the organization. They have to be aware of them. They have to know how to, to recognize ethical behavior. And if they don't, if they are uncertain of anything, they need to have a place to go to express those concerns so that they can be sure that they are doing what's right for the company and for themselves. But they also have to make sure that they're not going to be as honest and not to cause harm by being as honest. We have to be fair and honest and truthful to people, and we have to do what's right. Um, fairness and honesty in organizations means is there something wrong with your vehicle? Call them back. Get them repaired at no cost to the consumer. Find out what's going on wrong with your with your cars or with your product and do something about it quickly. Don't wait until uh, regulations require you to do it. Do it because it's the right thing to do. Do it because you are responsible with the product that you've provided. So we need to make certain that our ethical behavior in business is right. We want to stay in business. We want to make profit. We want to earn trust. And to do that, we have to make sure that we um, act responsibly. Now, green. Green is when people or organizations are doing things that are positive or neutral to the environment. Not going to cause harm or going to be helpful. Um, but sometimes organizations um, will lie about it or will make it seem as if they are. And these are the type of things that they can do. Beauty products that say that they're natural and, and, and so forth, but they contain chemicals. We don't want to lie to people. We want to tell people if it's green, if it's going to be healthy for you and your body, and it's not going to cause any harm, we want to be honest with that. That can also lead us to all types of um, um, litigation. So it, it's, it's in, in the business best interest. If you have a product that is not natural, don't say it. <laughs> If you have a product that's not pure, don't say it. If you have a product that is pure, say it and be honest about it. And make certain that you can be, ch if it's ever challenged, that you will stand up in court and say these products are, in fact, um, honest, um, clearly um, um, herbal or healthy uh, or whatever. Just be honest with what you're saying. Most individuals will be, um, you know, if they're buying products that are healthy and they see that this product is not, at least they know when they're buying the product, if they decide to buy it anyway. So making decisions about ethical issues, it's kind of hard sometimes to find out if it's going to be an ethical violation, but there are some general rules here. And we have a few questions that you can ask yourself or others. How does this actually fit into your own beliefs or values? Does the company have a specific code or policy in place? Read it. Have you read it? Do you understand it? Do you have any questions about it? Are there any potential legal uh, restrictions or violations that could result from the action that I'm contemplating or the action somebody else is contemplating? These are not the easiest of questions to answer, but they are a good starting point to determine if you are have an issue that may need to be investigated further by someone from your organization. Um, these are ways that you can influence your ethical behavior. Obviously, you can have some standards and values. You're going to have your influence of your coworkers and managers 
but you're going to also have a code of conduct that's written. And that will give you some guidelines as to um, a way to identify unethical business decisions or choices. How do we improve behavior, ethical behavior in business? Obviously, whistleblowing is a big deal. Code of ethics is another big deal. Um, some organizations go as far as having ethical training. In government, certain employees who are of a certain grade um, and a certain level of responsibility supervisory-wise are required not only to understand the code of on conduct and the code of ethics that uh, that's um, applicable to them, but they have to be trained and have to receive some type of certification. And this is, again, a way the organization can make certain that their employees are well aware of what their responsibilities are and also what right they have to report um, any type of uh, wrongdoing by outsiders or employees or anyone else that would affect the government and their job. So we want to make certain that we have to um, get, a, get to a place where we are beyond what's legally right, but deal really and dig deep into the integrity. Um, uh, what's right? What's best for our consumer? What's best for our employees? What works well for them? Not necessarily complying with laws with, you know, with regard to hours and, and compensation, but really go beyond and take good care of the people that work for us and care about them to earn their trust and to keep their trust. But we also want to make certain that it's, it, if we have an ethics program, it's going to be good for business. It's a little bit more work. It's, it requires you to evaluate, to take action, but it is good for business in the long run. And we want to make certain that we maintain a level of trust so that our employees trust us. They want to stay working with us. Our um, consumers, our cons consumers trust us and continue to buy products from us. But also, we are held at a higher standard within our industry and competitors as well as others. We know us and our business can trust that we will do what's right. And we can set standards for that. So the nature of social responsibility will have your voluntary responsibilities, your ethical and your legal responsibilities, and your economical responsibilities. And it is all together that these items work. They are not on in isolation. They work together. They are part of a unit, and this is the nature of responsibility. And it is inherent if you are a business owner or an employee or a stakeholder of a business that you understand these and that they all work together to bring an outcome that is positive for both the business, the individual, and the people to whom these businesses will affect. So we want to make certain that we have our uh, business to be our legal responsibilities, but we want to make certain that we measure it. We want to make sure that, they, that it, it's part of the philosophy, it's part of the culture of the organization. It does not have to be um, so rigid, but it has to be something that's sensible, that it can be put together, that can be followed up, and can be evaluated and used as a tool if individuals were to violate. So for our social responsibility, we need to know these things. We need to understand them. What's socially responsible, what's not, what is, what isn't, how is it mean, how does it really work out in your business and the particulars of your organization and the employees that make up that enterprise. But we want to make certain that we have a voluntary action by an employer to say these are the type of things that we're looking for, that we care about, that is important to us, and we are going to take it very seriously, and we're looking for you to, to tell us if there's any violation. Um, so the responsibility is other stakeholders, maintaining the procedure, updating them as necessary, particularly as, if there are legal um, um, implications to these ethical issues. Also providing the investors with information that they need, everything that they need, and good and bad so that they can make true decisions about whether or not to invest in you or whether to divest from you. But also protecting your your, order, your rights and your investments, making certain that your 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 copyrights are protected, make sure your trademarks are not violated, and being certain that you are ensure that uh, trade secrets are maintained and employees understand that and know when and what to do if that were to be violated and the responsibilities and also the consequences of those actions. The social responsibilities are going to be to the employees in the workplace and equal opportunities, compliance with law, no bullying, no um, racial or any type of discrimination or harassment. We have responsibilities. It's very important that we do what's right because the employees are going to be the very people who are designing, working, developing, and meeting those um, needs of the consumers, which ultimately um, turn into profit for an organization. So 
social responsibility. It's a big deal. It is a right that you should be able to expect from an organization to be informed, to be safe, to be to choose, to be heard, to to be treated with respect in an essence. And this this Coastal Liberal Society, although general, is very much a bedrock for any type of resor- social responsibility issue. If it's a violation of any of these, you have to consider that you may need to make some changes in your organization and how you do things to ensure that your Bill of Rights are not violated. Now, consumerism is going to be the future of uh, organizations that protect rights. Now, again, you have some rights. You have some um, ways that you can uh, ensure that an organization is respectful of you and the people that are um, related to you. You write letters. You um, you can also lobby the government. You can make announcements. You can boycott. You can actually boycott these organizations that are disrespectful, that are res- irresponsible to to the consumer to whom they are ultimately <laughs> receiving um, profit. But the most important thing is to know that you have a responsibility and to know your role in that responsibility. But we have to make certain that we are consistent in our our um, in communicating um, our social responsibility and we are um, um, just doing what's right, consistently doing what's right, and we're trying to do what's right. So finding um, an organization that has core values um, really does say a lot and more importantly like to see that they like to see that an organization cares not only do they pay them a good salary not only do they provide some type of health insurance and other type of benefits but they have excellent customer service they care about the communities in which they are residing they are trying to build um, relationships if they are consumers they respect people and they are motivating encouraging the entrepreneurial spirit this is extraordinarily important and an organization will always have their core values which may differ from Home Depot's, but nevertheless, they have their core values, which really guide their organization. And I believe organizations who have core values and they stand behind those core values, and they and they are they're the organizations that actually stand when the economy is bad, when people are not really buying a lot of um, of the goods and services. Those are the organizations that actually have the viability to stand the test of time because they care and because they are doing more than what's required of them in terms of their their responsibility. So and as you're reading this chapter, you will see that they are so much involved in social responsibility and ethics, and it is a deep and very personal issue. But as a, as a business owner, you'll also need to understand, too, that this evolving change, this evolving nature of ethics needs to be something that is part of the organization and is just as important as providing a good or a service. It is not something that you want to just say, this is our policy and you leave it on the shelf. It needs to be a breathing, living document that is, um, I would say, from the top of the organization to the most um, uh, un- unseen employee. Uh, this is a part of the culture of this organization and it's part of uh, how you breathe, how you live this product, more so than the product that you provide to the consumer. If you are concerned about ethical issues, you can be a part of organizations that are geared to helping others and providing assistance. It is so important that we d- develop a, a sensitivity to this because it's so part of who we are. And as a nation, we are going to be measured based on how well we treat others and based on how well we do business. And there's nothing wrong with profit, but we have to also consider as we achieve our profit goals, we need to also achieve these goals in terms of how we treat others in business. So when we conclude this chapter, I would like you to think about how would you, um, how would you think business would regulate their own activities? Or do you think the government should be involved to enforce ethical standards? And what do you think about the, um, any arguments for or against social responsibility by businesses? What's your feedback? As you read through this chapter, you're going to see some of your own personal ethical um, values come to light, and it may very well be consistent with what you are seeing, or it may very well conflict. But in the end, it's important that we talk about ethics and how it affects businesses and put our own personal um, values involved in that and to determine how or who or what organization we want to do business with or be employed by. Um, Again, this is Chapter 2, and I thank you very much for listening, and I will see you in the next one.